a catalyst can increase the rate of a reaction by increasing the number of effective collisions and also providing a reaction path with a lower activation energy. So for example in this reaction, the catalyst is consumed in a rate limiting step and regenerated in a subsequent step. Whereas the intermediate Y is produced in the slow step. Now a typical example is a decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to form elephant toothpaste, which is a large foam-like substance. And this reaction is very slow. Where the activation energy in a single step reaction is illustrated as follows. Now adding potassium iodide to a solution of hydrogen peroxide accelerates the reaction. So the iodide catalyst is consumed to increase the rate of reaction of the slow step and regenerated in a subsequent step. And here you can see that hypo-iodite is the intermediate that's produced in the slow step. So as we can see the catalyst created a multi-step pathway to the reaction that has a lower activation energy. And the activation energy for the slow step is larger than that of the fast step. And we can see that the addition of the catalyst did not change the energy of the reactants and products. And the net concentration of the catalyst in this reaction is constant because it's consumed and regenerated. Some catalysts increase the rate of a reaction by binding to the reactants. And enzyme catalysis is a prime example. And it's a homogeneous catalysis process because the enzyme functions in the same phase as the reactants. And the reactants are called the substrate in a biological process. So enzymes are large biomolecules that have many functions within living organisms and they mainly catalyze or speed up chemical reactions. Now an enzyme has an active site where the substrate is going to react with the enzyme through non-covalent interactions. And the enzyme substrate complex is the intermediate formed in the rate determining step so the catalyst binds to the substrate to speed up this step. And the intermediate is consumed and the product is formed in a subsequent step. And this process keeps repeating many times in a biological environment or living organism. Now the enzyme causes the reactant to be oriented more favorably such that the reactant molecule fits in the active site of the enzyme or large biomolecule. And this type of exposure provides a reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. Some catalysts involve covalent bonding between the catalyst and the reactants. And a prime example is acid-base catalysis. With a reactant or intermediate either gains or loses a proton. And a prime example is the acid catalyzed hydration of ethylene. Now step one involves a protonation of the double bond in ethylene. So because hydrogen is significantly positively charged in the hydronium ion due to the large difference in electronegativity between oxygen. 
then that creates a strong reaction between a hydrogen and a pi bond. Where the electrons are used to create a bond between a carbon and hydrogen. And this yields the carbocation. And step two involves the formation of the oxonium cation. Where the carbocation reacts with one of the lone pairs in the H2O molecule to form a bond between a carbon and oxygen atom. And that yields the oxonium cation, which is positively charged. And step three involves a deprotonation of the oxonium cation to regenerate the hydronium ion. So here the catalyst is hydronium, which is consumed to speed up the rate limiting step. And it gets regenerated in a subsequent step. And the carbocation and the oxonium cation are intermediates, which get generated in one step and consumed in a subsequent step. Surface catalysis involves a reactant or intermediate that binds to a surface or forms a covalent bond with it. And it's a heterogeneous type of catalysis where the reactants and catalysts are not in the same phase. So for example, in a catalytic converter of a car, you have a sheet of platinum that's used to oxidize harmful carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide gas. And step one in a reaction mechanism is adsorption. With the carbon monoxide and oxygen molecules are adsorbed onto the platinum surface. And this here is the slow step or rate limiting step. And step two involves the oxidation of carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. So this is a possible reaction mechanism. Where the platinum catalyst is consumed in the rate limiting step and regenerated in the subsequent step. And the intermediates are carbon or platinum and platinum dioxide, which are produced in a rate limiting step and consumed in a subsequent step.